Hello and welcome to another episode of Corgi Town USA. I am Candy, owner of Corgi Town USA. In my lap is Chuckles, our spokes Korg. And with me always, I'm Kat. I brought Digby today. Digby's here. Digby's here. And he's torturing Booger. He's taught he uh, he's over in the corner torturing Booger as he always does. And we've got Hammer and we've got uh, Mortimer. Yeah, Mortimer's torturing Digby. Digby's torturing Booger. Mm-hmm. Hammer's avoiding all of it. Yeah, I think we. I think we've got everybody covered. <laughs> Corgi Town USA, where the corgis run the town. That's right. <laughs> so we are starting a new series, uh, Corgis in TV and Film. And I was super excited about this because all of Corgi Nation, when we see a Corgi on TV or in a movie, we get excited and we say, oh my gosh, Corgi sighting, Corgi sighting. It's a Corgi sighting. So I thought I would talk to some of the people that have either handled these Corgis or had these Corgis. So we are going to go back in time, ladies and gentlemen. We are going back to Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead, which I believe was 1989 or 1990, somewhere around there. And The Accidental Taurus, which I think more people have seen that movie. Right. That was a good book and a very good movie. They're both kind of cult classics. Yes. But some of you may or may not remember there was a Corgi in those films. There was. And I I saw Accidental Tours. Yes. This is the Corgi we are going to talk about today. So I ended up going to a convention and I met actor Steve Coogan, which for those Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead uh, fans, the dishes are done, man. That's Steve Coogan, the actor that played the part of the brother. And he had some, he had a table at the convention with some things he could sign. And I saw a picture from the scene and I said, oh my gosh, I don't know how I forgot that there was a Corgi in that movie. And so I got to talking to him. He says, oh, that's actually the Corgi that was an accidental tourist. So Steve Coogan gave me this information and I will tag him in this. I may aggravate him, but I was excited that I learned that. And I learned that from him and that he actually worked with him. So in my search, I thought, man, it would be wonderful if I could talk to some people who worked with Bud the Corgi. I was absolutely excited to have found Bud's mom. Should we bring her on? We shall bring her on. Okay. Miss Kim Barger, welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you. I found this to be very surprising and interesting (laughs) at the same time. It's like, how did she find me? It's been years. She's determined. (laughs) She sure is. Yep. I'm a persistent one for better or for worse, I suppose. Yes. Well, we're, we're so glad that you decided to come on and, um, and I really appreciate you sharing our story. So let's, let's talk about Bud um, and let's talk about you a little bit. So if I remember correctly, you were a groomer in your husband's veterinary practice, correct? Uh, yes, he had, um, his father was actually a veterinarian oh, and then no. he became a veterinarian and I needed a job badly and I applied there and I worked as you know cleaning kennels uh helping set up surgeries you know stuff like that and all these foxtail dogs would come in from the field and they have to strip them to get to the foxtails and that's how i started grooming is started clipping these dogs down and i liked it and i played with it and ended up setting up a groom shop and became one a groom for about 20 years and i told oh, wow. myself I told myself, if you go over 20 years, you <laughs> give it up. <laughs> but I, I enjoyed it. It was the variety was great. And yeah. the dogs and most of the owners were good. And uh... <laughs> the dogs were fabulous. The owners, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> some of the owners were really good, but some of the dogs weren't that great. They were just ugh, hard to handle or, sure, or stuff. But I had an old English sheepdog that would come in pretty regularly and he'd come in and he put his feet up on my groom table so I didn't have to lift him. I was like, oh, you're so nice. Aww. And I lift him up, put him on the table and I could leave him there. I could go do other things and he'd just sit up there. And then I combed him out. He was full coated. Wow. Those are and fluffy I, dogs. Lots yeah, of hair. Lots of hair. But she yeah. took really good care of him so he wasn't too bad. And as soon as I finished combing out, I just scooped them up and took them over to the tub, put them in the tub. And when my bather came, she could wash them and he'd lay in the tub. That's now, precious. that's my that's my kind of dog. 
<laughs> right? Yeah, no kidding. Gosh, that sounds so <laughs> idyllic. And I mean, that is, that is fun. I mean, you, I think you have to be a little bit of an animal lover to go into something like grooming because you need to tolerate some of the ones that are not so docile <laughs> like your sheepdog. Well, you need to also have an ability, an artist ability to, to see lines and stuff because yeah. I've seen a lot of groomers and I've gone to their shops, this, you know, you got to sneak in, you know, go see what they're doing and see how their dogs are looking. And I look at their dogs and they got a tough here and a tough there. And they say, isn't this dog come out really nice? And I'm like, mm, <laughs> no, <laughs> be sure. polite. You know? yeah. So I thought, okay, I'm doing really good. Cause I did some show grooming for oh, wow. some people. I did a, I couldn't believe it. I actually did a soft coated wheat and I, I was like, where did this come from in Little Town Merced? You know, <laughs> a, a, wheat, a wheat is that they have like almost they look kind of like dreadlocks. Their fur? No, right? those are those are poolies. Oh, that's no, what I was a soft coated wheaten is is a terrier, and they're a tan, usually a very tan color. Okay, uh, cream, and okay. Uh, they're a medium sized dog, and their coat is incredibly soft. It's oh. they're really nice. You you trim them up like a you know, like a terrier, but you leave more coat. Okay. Like okay. But they they were nice. And I couldn't believe I actually groomed one for show. Oh, How wonderful. That is, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And then so, I, sh I showed dogs. I yeah. had Great Danes. And of Ooh. course, after having Great Danes, and they're very hard to finish their championship, I got Corgis. <laughs> Cat laughs. <laughs> he got from this big. To this. They shrunk. <laughs> they shrunk. What happened? Your dog shrunk. So that's how you got started with Bud. And I wanted to ask. So Bud, for those uh, listening who don't know, definitely try to check out, see some of the old photos. Look on Google. Check out the movies. I love both of those movies, um, mm, yeah. especially being corgi people. But you, you <clears throat> said that you went with cardigans. Why specifically the cardigan corgis? Well, at that time, um, Pembroke's were pretty popular so to finish one in this championship was a little harder but also the cardigans health were better you didn't have the back problems that you could have in the uh, Pembrokes so I also I don't know how I even found the breeder but found a really good breeder of cardigans and I got a little uh, female named Justin and ended up breeding her and got a small litter uh, a red female and a tri-colored female and two tri-males, which was Bud and Cody. And those oh, are the wow. two that went to the, into the movies. Bud and Cody, Bud the boys. And Cody. Yeah, but, so Bud's the famous one. <clears throat> yes. And then Cody, uh, Cody was used for some scenes because his colors were similar, correct? Uh, yes, but they used uh, Cody a lot for setting up lighting. Oh, Okay. Because they're black and you got to set up the lighting. So, right. But they said that he was in some of the scenes, but they usually, um, Bud was the one they usually used. But Cody was there. He was just as trained as Bud was. So that's, that's what they fabulous. did. I, so I have a question. Um, and I don't know if you know the answer. It just came to me. You said you had two females and two males. Now, mm -hmm. and, and the two males were in, in the movies. The two males are the movie stars. Lassie, which some people don't know this, Lassie was a male. Lassie was a male? Mm -hmm. Lassie, yes. yes. The Lassie dog, was a male. Every dog who played Lassie was a male. Yep. So my question is, in films, are they more behaved or are dogs more be male dogs more behaved than females? Or Well, the females I've noticed, and this is the reason why I like the females more, is they're a little sharper in temperament. Okay. And where the males are a lot more goofier. <laughs> <laughs> we can attest to that. <laughs> you know, they're oh, okay. Yeah, let's have fun. The female's like, you really want me to do that? <laughs> I always listen, listen to the paw. We ain't doing that. No. <laughs> yeah, listen to, listen to this. Wait, system. I've had a, so I've had two female corgis out of yeah. my, I will only ever have one female at a time. Mm -hmm. because yep. they seem to be a little bit more territorial. Yep. But they're definitely more discerning. You are correct yes. there. Boog is very, mm -hmm. Booger, my my girl right now, is very 
particular about her space and who's in it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that, but so you have, uh, so there were four, that's a small litter four in the litter, the two, two girls and two boys. Do you know any idea what happened to the girls in the litter? Do you know who got them or probably not? I have no idea. I know the red one as I showed her, but she had somewhat of a crooked foot. So they didn't, See, their feet are supposed to be a little more splayed out, not so much straight in like uh, Pim's have a straighter leg and a straighter toe in, where yeah. the cardigans had a little more of a knuckle and turnout. Well, she had one that was really turned out. And I, to the life of me, can't remember what happened to them. But I know they all went in good homes. I don't, I don't dump dogs. Sure. And oh, of course not. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> and yeah. I make sure they have really good homes. Of all my dogs... All my Danes and everything. I only had one Dane. Was it mine? Yeah. Or no, that might have been Carol's Dane that ever got into a really bad situation. Aww. And uh, we got the dog back and he Good. was half starved. So, but most but of all my dogs went to good homes. I was very careful about that. And I didn't read a lot. So, right. Yeah, we, we like happy endings. We do like mm -hmm. happy endings. So tell us the story of how Bud became a movie star. So you have these <laughs> these these cardigan corgis here, and you were grooming, and you were doing some show, correct? Yes, I was showing Great Danes and Cardies, and this was a cardigan um, specialty show because I didn't have any Danes there. Okay. And it was down in the L.A. area. And it was outside, and we came, and uh, the breeders that I got my dogs from, I went with them, and we set up outside, and all these people were kind of on a Twitter, you know, they were, oh, this, and oh, and they were, there's, and they were, there's a people here to look for a corgi for a movie, and I'm like, oh, okay, fine. Now, where was I? <laughs> And they were all shoving these corgis at these people. And oh, I was yeah. looking at them like, oh, man, get a wanting, life. Wanting them to get theirs in the movie? That's what they mm -hmm. were doing? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, get a life, you know? I was like. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> so they did do that. And they came over and looked at ours. And, of course, we had Bud and Cody there. And Bud was owned by me and a gal owned Cody that I was helping her show her dog. And um, then they go off and look at other dogs and then they come back and then they go off and look at other dogs and they come back and started talking to us. And they said they were making a movie called The Accidental Tourist and they needed some corgis. And would we be interested in letting our corgis go for the show? And I said, mm, really? And he says, are you buying them or wanting to use them they say oh we buy we buy outright that way there's no problem or people being up you know upset right. or want to take the dogs at a certain time you know that kind of stuff so i talked to the gal and we discussed it and we decided okay my mind was on the condition that i had my dog pointed to the point where he was going to get his championship and that's what you work for when you're breeding dogs. Right. And I said, you can have them, but he's got to finish his championship too. And they said, okay. So I think their names were the Hollywood Animal Rentals. I'm not sure about the rental part. Okay. And, right. they, and they were up where you go through the grapevine, 99. And they were up just somewhere up there. You know how they have the... Uh, not Red Flag, not the, you know, the amusement park up in that area. Okay. In LA? And, yeah. Just when you go into the grapevine, there's a little valley there. Okay. And then you're just coming over there. It's on the tip of my head, but I can't remember. But that's besides the point. Ma it's Ma Magic Mountain, is it? Yeah. You got yeah, it. Magic, Magic Mountain. Mountain there. Okay. Yeah. I got the M, but beyond that. <laughs> so Two anyway. heads are better than one. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so... I don't remember which order it is, but I did have the dog and I did finish his championship and they ended up with the dogs. 
So they talked with me off and on. And one day they called me and they, I said, hi, how are they doing? They said, they're doing great. He says, for a while there, we thought we bought the dumbest dogs there ever was out here. <laughs> and I, Oh, no. <laughs> he said, they didn't know nothing. Well, of course, we just did confirmation showing. We didn't teach them. But they're pretty much a blank slate. Yeah. yeah, and they were stupid. We try to teach them this and that. They just weren't getting it. And the thing was, is they had a timeline because they had to have these dogs sure. trained for the show. Right. And he said, and finally one day it was like, aha! And the dogs figured it out. And bam, bam, bam! They were doing five wow. behaviors a day. You know, it's so crazy. That sounds like a corgi, though, like that stubbornness. Like, I don't know who you are, and you have to show me that you're worth it before I start working. <laughs> true. <laughs> so very true. Like <laughs> but it was so funny. You were going, I bought the stupidest, <laughs> dumbest dogs. <laughs> Until something clicked. Yeah, right. Until something clicked, and then they were they they did it. So um, they kept them up on the ranch there. They ended up keeping them both. So that was good. And good. They, took, they loved them. They took care of them, exercised them, trained them. And they also did a, like a Purina commercial. I saw them in one of those. During oh, that nice. Time. That's mm -hmm. so fun. Well, and I kind of wonder too, uh, you know, we just, we had an episode recently with Melissa of East Coast Corgi Rescue. Yes. And she talks a little bit about how there are these timelines when a dog goes to a new home. So you yeah. have, uh, it's like, you know, three days, three uh, hours or three weeks and three months. Right. And so that that's probably one of those timelines where they're still getting acclimated mm -hmm. and still yeah. trying to find yes, how much of their personality they can show to their new home. And sure. Now that they're working movie stars. <laughs> so you, so, you know, you said they, they kept in touch with you a little bit. Um, and then you have a fun story, I think, about the premiere for the accidental. Oh, <laughs> that was kind of funny. But when they were accepted and stuff and the movie was coming out, they took a picture of me with his mom, Justin, at the movie theater and announced it's going to be at this date or yada, yada, yada. And my husband was so excited that he called the theater and he told him, he says, I'm going to invite my friends. So when they come in, I will let you know who they are. Boy, did he got friends. <laughs> Old town. He was out. He was an out. He was a wonderful vet. He was funny. People loved him. He was very good at what he did. Right. And so he had a lot of friends. So we showed up to the premiere and he's standing there by the door with the guy and the guy's got a counter and he's going, that's my friend. Those are my friend. This person's my friend. Those people over there are my friend. And the only thing they asked, requested that us to do was to buy food. All right. Really. So he did, he was going to pay for all of this, but I, some, I think he paid for some of them, but um, they just wanted people to buy the food, you know, candy right. stuff. Now, some people came in who actually bought tickets to see the show. <laughs> Even <laughs> better. People. So we filled up the theater and the movie's going along and all of a sudden Bud shows up and everybody's in the theater going, yay, yay! <laughs> all right, good, here's the dog. And these other people were looking around like, it's only a stupid dog. It's like, what is wrong with these people? Oh, how funny. <laughs> so we all watched the movie and we had a great time. <laughs> I fabulous. love that story. I mean, that, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's cute. Yeah. Now, I mean, now like our, I feel like our crowd, you know, it's, oh my gosh, Corgi, Corgi sightings. Like that would be our friends. That's you it. Know, Corgi but, sightings. But that's oh. so funny about these spectators. Let's go see a movie. And they're like, oh. These people know this dog? Is this, yeah. is this guy a big deal? <laughs> it's a big the deal. Was, the movie is going along, and, uh, and then they introduced the corgi, and people clapped and went nuts. And <laughs> That's crazy. I liked it. My husband loved it, too, so he, he really liked that. Yeah. So... That's, I just, I, I think about, you know, that time and I just, I can imagine it like the way you tell it, like I can imagine being there 
<laughs> right? <laughs> Both as being excited, but then just being a spectator. Like, oh, what did we walk into here? I thought we were going to see yeah, a movie. What's, what's going on? <laughs> exactly. Because yeah. you were, uh, it, you, I think you said this was a premiere in the town that you live. Yes. A little town. We yeah. have 80,000 people. That's yeah. small. And and all eighty thousand didn't realize that this was your corgi famous <laughs> in the movie. Hello, yeah, what's yeah, exactly. wrong with them? Exactly. <laughs> it did oh make God. it into the paper. <laughs> so, and the yeah. and the animal people they gave. I'm going. I would really like pictures, and they sent me pictures. Now make sure they stay. I'm I'm really pushing it here, giving you these pictures, and make sure nobody knows that you got them and stuff. Uh. So they send me pictures with uh, um, William Hurt and Gina Davis and the dogs. Oh, so, how fun! That is fun. Do you still have them by chance? I Any sure do. Oh, <laughs> I had to pull them out to see. What I, <laughs> I had to pull them out and say, "Okay, do you remember that?" No, I, I did pull them out to kind of stir my memories. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's ah, it's so exciting. I'm just I'm so happy that you're here and that you're telling us this story. That's and, a fabulous story. Yeah. We're, I mean, I'm so excited. And I, I love that, that you had Bud. So how, how old were uh, Bud and Cody when, when they? I think they got them about when they were a year old. Okay. okay. That's pretty, they were pretty young. They were pretty young, pretty much blank slate. If they wanted to teach them yes. to stay, whatever. So that was good. They didn't have a lot of that kind of training in them. So they could put their own training in them, which is nice. And did you get, uh, did you get them at like eight weeks? Six, six oh, or eight? I, I bred. I she bred, bred them. them. Oh, you bred them. That's right. So you you saw them once, and they were little tiny potatoes. Oh, yes. Little bitty <laughs> tiny potatoes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they were cute. They were fun. And then I think you said that they, when you brought them, when you were, I mean, was that hard for you to take them, or were you just kind of happy that that was the next chapter? How did you feel about that, bringing them to the studio? Um, I was okay with it. Because they were going to have a life other than sitting around my house after they finished getting their championship and sitting around the house. And okay. I, I'm not working. My husband was working. And it would have been just, you know, a little harder for them, I think, to work, go, not go anywhere. <laughs> Sorry about that. We have somebody outside and none of the corgis are happy. Yet, so. Yes. <laughs> Bear with us just a moment. Okay, I think okay. we've got a man. There we go. <laughs> now they're gonna knock over the camera. <laughs> They've done that. So when you when you brought them, uh, I think you had told me before that you had brought their like championship papers, their breeding papers. You brought all of yeah. those, the documentation. I think you said mm -hmm. they signed over, <laughs> signed over the registration, gave okay. them the copy of the championship, and handed it to them, and they went, okay, fine, toss. <laughs> Okay. Next, they just yeah. yeah they you you had the dogs championed for one particular path in their little doggy lives. Mm -hmm. They had them for another particular path, and both paths would have been absolutely beautiful. And they they became mm -hmm. movie stars, <laughs> complete with the. It was good form. Yeah, yeah. They needed. They needed. They were smart. You just. They needed something else to do besides hang out in my house. Right. At working, that time. working breed. They had a job. Yeah. They had a job. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's. They had. They said they had a little track, and they let them out. And they'd run that track. Oh my gosh! So. How cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet they loved that. They did. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they, them. So they like weren't just, you know, in a movie or two. They still worked them and they still had them and they didn't, you know, send in a cage or anything. They did. They had a whole facility there. They even supplied lions and stuff like that to the movies. Oh yeah. yeah. All kinds of animals, all kinds mm -hmm. of film animals. You said yeah. that makes my heart happy though, that this, this it does. studio it does. is like taking well, care of them and treating them well. I, mm -hmm. I do have to say, um, back in my youth or, or youth, uh, <laughs> depends on if you're from New York or not. You're just, I, you just, my cousin, my cousin Vinny. That. Yes, that's He's right. I, 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 <laughs> my cousin I, Vinny. <laughs> I did work with, um, an animal trainer. They did exotics, at, uh, back in New York, uh, for photo shoots and, and commercials and things like that. They did exotics, uh, lions. So we, we rented, rented lions for a photo mm -hmm. shoot. The, 
those lions are treated so amazingly well. Be well, they're, yes, they're models. I mean, they're, they're models. Royalty, and, right? and yeah. you know, and uh, yeah, I'm a graduate of the Fashion Institute of Technology. So for many years, I've worked with models. Uh, some famous mm -hmm. people also treated very, very well. Um, interesting, as you might guess, uh, lions eat way more than most models do. Just saying. <laughs> The lions have a higher metabolism. Oh, the lions yeah. have a way higher metabolism <laughs> than oh um, yeah, <laughs> yeah than than most of the models do. But they still get treated very well. So it, it's it's yeah, it, it was a, it's good a cool situation. life. It's a cool life, and they love them. They're not treated. Uh, we don't always love the you know human models because they could be a little mm. <laughs> the animals every you know every animal that i had ever worked with uh in in photo shoots or commercials uh when i was working for ad agencies they're just they're loved on so much and they're so adorable and it's so wonderful uh they're just loved on so yeah. I, I can see stuff. i can see that i can and i can see that being part of the temperament for working too because it's like chuckles his friend um had a a news a news segment and chuckles completely took it over i was a little embarrassed i was like this is your friend show but chucky was like ah it's, it's my time in the camera and i think part of that is because he gets loved on i'm like you're the star of the corgi town show you're the spokes cork and part of him's like oh it's my time to shine yeah so <laughs> maybe there's that a little bit of that but i did want to ask so if i remember correctly i think you said it was a few years ago they had actually circled back around because this was this was what 35 yeah. years 35 years ago probably in the time of yeah. Bud, roughly yeah but a few years ago you heard from him again yes i did i was out of the blue like you guys <laughs> <laughs> we try i was like huh yeah we were just wondering if you you know we bought bud and cody from you we we're wondering if you had any more corgis and i'm like well that ship sailed long time ago but I said, no, I don't. And I says, I couldn't even tell you the name of the people I got them from, uh, my, my right. female from on that. So yeah. I'm sorry, I don't do it anymore. You know, it was a long time. You know, I only yeah. bred them for a short period of time. So, um, And then you, you wound up with a, a couple of famous ones, a famous one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Weird, huh? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> but I think, you know, it's maybe it's Bud from the bridge just tapping you on the shoulder again a few years. Hey, remember me, mom? And then here's Candy calling. <laughs> right. Just just a little, yeah. Let you know. Letting Still you know. Down. He's they fine. Live, they live for a long time. It's Those never parties. long enough. I tell you, I the I think the cardigans, though, tend to have a longer life lifespan I'm, than yeah, the pennies. I'm up to 20. It's wow. amazing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I I believe, uh, although mine was uh, said to be a Pembroke, I believe mine is a, is a cardigan. He's, uh, he is a rescue. Mm -hmm. um, he, he's what they call an American Corgi, which is a breed that they're doing now essentially as a mixed breed. It's cardigan. It's cardigan. And Pembroke. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, it's, it's one of the things that are very, so, they're very popular. Right they're now. built and, so and, differently. Both those Corgis are, built so differently yes so uh i i've got i keep looking down uh for for our viewer listeners <laughs> I, I keep looking down um uh digby is is on my foot digby is much longer for those of you who've seen pictures of him he's much much longer than his uh than his two brofers uh mortimer or chuckles uh, he's much longer body those two and and even his little cousin jacks much stockier yeah Jack Jack's has a fluff coat gene. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got a little bit of fluff coat. But yeah, it's really interesting. Um, but yeah, that's amazing. Well, we won't keep you all day, Kim. I mean, I'm sure we could that's because okay. I'm a chatterbox. And, yes. <laughs> so, but thank you so very much for coming on today and You're sharing welcome. the story of Bud. And I think um, my audience here is going to be really excited to hear the story of how Bud came to be. Absolutely. How yeah. much fun is that? Just, I, 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 as you were telling the story, all I kept thinking of, and I do not, it was, I think it was the forties. Yeah, it was the forties. I do not remember the, um, the actress that the story goes, she was sipping a soda in a drugstore on Hollywood and Vine or something like that. And, uh, a producer came in and discovered her. The discovery stories. Yeah. The discovery yeah. stories and a famous actress. And of course her name 
escapes me now, but that's all I kept thinking about with uh, with Bud and Cody is, you know, here you discovered. are. Yeah, here you are not wanting to, you know, shove the dogs in, in the producers' faces. And they were discovered. They were discovered yeah. sipping a soda at the counter of a drugstore in Los Angeles somewhere. Sunbathing on the grassy yeah. yes. out in the middle of the beautiful weather down in Southern California. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's so funny. That's a great story. Yeah. That's And, you know, he's at that time, we talk a lot about the paparazzi here. So if you have a corgi and you go anywhere, people say, oh, my gosh, corgis. But several years ago, it didn't used to be like that. They no. hadn't caught on in popularity. And my first corgi was Pembroke Lilo, the most precious boy there ever was. The most precious boy there ever was. The other children here get jealous, but it's okay. <laughs> I don't know. Chuckles is pretty revered. Yes. But, but anyway, they, uh, people would say all the time, what kind of dog is that? That's a really cute dog. What kind of, a corgi. A what? And people didn't know. And so, as, yeah, they weren't, they hadn't caught on as much. And I, I'm kind of going back through corgis and TV and film and they're not, you know, I'm kind of doing research on, of course they're showing up a lot more now. And, um, audience who doesn't know, and Kim, if you don't know, uh, Chuckles here hit, uh, his, mom has actually been in commercials and on print and his dad is actually in that show the crown so chuckles is kind of like movie star you know in the family but i'm going through there are more now than there used to be but as the farthest back i can find is there was a sh there was a movie called blue hawaii in the early 60s oh. with elvis Elvis Blue Hawaii, and yes, a little red corgi in it. On oh, the really? Island. Okay, yeah. okay. And I got a little angry when I I had seen it in my youth, and it had circled back, and I, I got a little angry because they were talking about how stupid the dog was. The, the <laughs> characters, they said that dog is so stupid. And I'm like, why did you call that little corgi stupid? He didn't do anything. He's obviously very smart because he knows where you are and you have food. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it's it's interesting. You know, they they've really grown in popularity, but Bud is is the most famous one, I think, because yeah. people, people know those movies and, right. um, you know, get, yeah. getting to talk to his mom is a really special thing. And we appreciate you and your contribution, Kim, and, and coming on and telling us about it. Yes. Thank you so much for being our guest today. Yeah. It was what a fun you? story. Kat was laughing at me because of how excited I was that you were coming on. I was, I was, <laughs> it's a great story. I yes. love it. I love the story of how you found me, the newspaper. Thing. I, I, that just shocked me. Oh, I should share that, I suppose. This is yeah, I should. It's like, really? <laughs> so I, as I'm looking, it, you know, I'm doing this research because now on, on Corgi Town, I want to do a segment on Corgis and TV and film. And so I start looking in, into research. And of course, the, the conversation with Steve Coogan was on the government. Well, I wonder what I can find on Bud the Corgi. Now, IMDb, Internet Movie Database, does have uh, casting details there. So and most most people know about IMDb. If you want to look up your favorite actor or producer, director, their credits will be there. And that website's pretty built out. There isn't a lot on animals. Stuff. Oh, interesting. There's a little bit. So Rin Tin Tin, very famous, of course, German Shepherd. Um, and then I'm sure there's something on the the Lassie dogs. Um, and then there's Benji. You know, we have some famous dogs that we think of in TV and film. I couldn't find anything on IMDb for Bud the Dog. So in my Google rabbit hole, let's call it, um, I ended up coming uh, finding this uh, article in the Orlando Sentinel, I believe from the late 80s when the movie was being released. I think it was 1989. And the lady wrote, just did a write-up on Bud and about how Bud and Cody were litter mates. And then I look and I found Kim's name. And then I thought, I'm just going to look up. I wonder if I could get a hold of her. And I found you. And I was so excited. There was actually another little blurb in there about, um, so you bred Cody and Bud. And I believe if the article's correct, or if I remember reading it correctly, that there, uh, you said the mom was just Justin. Justin. Yeah. Um, I it Justin. Okay. So you didn't know who bred them, but what I read was the, the, um, is it Stacy Q? I believe her name is. She's a, an eighties artist, the two love hearts artist. Her mom was a Corgi breeder. And according to that article, the lineage comes from her mom. So there's also famous people. Famous involved. recording artist dog. Yes. Very, you know, six degrees of separation. But that's that's how I uh, that's how I found you, Kim. And that's that's I I Florida. But yeah, um, crazy the, rabbit hole. My yeah. dogs from were from the L.A. area and they probably did have um, 
contact or or knew or relatives that were that way. Everybody's yeah. in showbiz, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So very good chance. So yeah. That yeah. was interesting. That was really interesting. Well, thank you so much, Kim. Thank you. We hope you have a great rest of your night and we can't thank you enough for coming on today. And yes, the thank story. you. Thank fun you. Story. That was fun. Great. <laughs> We're glad you think so. Thanks so much, Kim. Take care of yourself. Okay. Thank you. Bye. 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 Oh my gosh. I am so excited. That, uh, yeah, it's your first famous Corgi. Although your son is somewhat famous. He is, his he famous is. lineage. Well, you know, he's the, he's the star of the Corgi Town show. He is the star <laughs> of the Corgi Town show. But I, although mine is barking louder. <laughs> just saying. He is very mouthy today. But I, I think, I just, it's so funny to me that these people get Bud and Cody and like, oh, these dogs are so dumb. Like that just cracks me up because I can so see that. I can so see. I wonder if they had never worked with Corgis before. It's possible. Well, obviously they had a hard time finding them because right. they're talking to Kim and say, we need to find a Corgi. And they end up going to the show yep, and not really finding what they're looking at. But it just, it cracks me up because that sounds like such a Corgi thing to be like, oh, we're going to get these dogs. And they hear about how smart they are. that They won't do anything. That is a Corgi. That is that dumb as a fox right? where they're like, huh? I don't know. I don't know. But really they just don't want to. Right. You know? <laughs> sounds like Corgitude. So it, it is. It's absolute corkitude. Um, <laughs> well, so much so. I will uh, find some photos of Bud, and um, maybe if I'm very nice to Kim, maybe she'll send send us some photos of photos that she has, and I'll try to drop them in the comments or on our website where this uh, where this episode will be, so that I can share for those that uh, don't decide to Google. I mean, I recommend that you do Google because it's fun. Yeah. And when you have an extra three, four, 10 hours on your hands. <laughs> well, if you get in the rabbit holes like I do, but, but, uh, Cody and Bud, so cute. So, yes. cute. so stay tuned. There will be more episodes of Corgis in TV and film. Um, this is, this will be a whole segment, kind of like our rescue stories where we'll do more on these as yes. I discover. So if there's a famous Corgi or one you would like to hear about, please comment us, inbox us, uh, and please like, and subscribe, uh, this video or listen on your favorite podcast platform. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, you know, all the social media calls. Yes, indeed. So we're here for you every Thursday, all things Corgi and dog lifestyle, candy, chuckles, Catherine Digby. Booger Hammer. Booger Hammer. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Oh, and Mortimer. And Mortimer. <laughs> poor, poor, poor Mortimer. Mortimer. Part of us. <laughs> the whole Corgi committee appreciates you being with us all week or every week. Every good week. night. Good night. <laughs>